Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Shoreditch in the East End to Brixton in South London. This ride takes about 40 to 45 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. This ride is about 10 kilometers long or six and a half miles. If you want to see more safe cycle routes across London just like it, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I post new ones like it here every week. All right, let's get going. So we're starting on Shoreditch High Street opposite the church and you immediately want to start going down Rivington Street. This street has been made relatively quiet with quite a nifty trick. It's two way for bikes the whole way down, but it's only one way for cars and crucially the way in which it is one way for cars alternates. So you'll see that there's a no entry sign here. Every time we meet a side road, it flips. So a, a motorist here it flips again. A motorist wouldn't be able to use this as a through route, but we can use this as a through route. And the result is that uh, people in cars can access businesses and homes on the street but they can't rat run through it. Now when we meet Great Eastern Street here you wait for the light and you do the crossing. In the opposite direction this is a little bit annoying there's not actually a light going in the opposite direction so you really just have to wait for a gap in the traffic but we're going in this direction and that's fine. You're presented with the choice of directions here and you want to go down Paul Street which is the street on the left and this street is going to take us right towards the city of London and I think it's pretty reasonable to cycle down. This is actually part of Transport for London's Cycle Super Highway 1. It's a signposted route. Um, it's not really got that much infrastructure on it but it's quietened down and you'll see in a second why that is. It's kind of got gates and, uh, and filters at the end which prevent motor traffic from going through it and it's kind of a similar story to Rivington Street, a similar effect anyway. Uh, in that it prevents uh, cars using it as a rat run here. You can see that this gate here is uh, something that we can travel through but cars can't travel through. Um, and then after that gate it becomes Wilson Street and uh, yeah that's really just the continuation of the street. You'll see during the day there's there's quite a lot of construction activity and delivery vehicles around so you might run into those but generally you won't see much through traffic on here. Now when you get to these lights you want to turn right straight away and go down this little bit of street called Sun Street and it'll take you into Finsbury Square which has actually a really nice cycle track on it so you'll just be able to go through here. This is where the road actually is quite busy around this, this is quite a busy junction but it doesn't matter because we're protected from the traffic by that curb. Um, and then you head on to Chiswell Street. Now what we're doing here is we're actually following a, uh, a signposted quiet way route. That's basically a, a sort of transport for London speak for uh, a route lined along back streets. Confusingly this didn't used to be a very quiet road at all. If you came to the city of London before the pandemic you might remember this street. We're about to go in a, a road tunnel under the Barbican and this was a very busy place to cycle but you can see there's no traffic there at all now and there's loads of cars. Why is that? Um, it's because the City of London has gone pretty gung-ho with low traffic neighbourhoods, LTNs, and uh, well, particularly their, their own version of an LTN, which they call a zero emission street. And the, they basically introduced a lot of road closures for most traffic. And one of the, and basically they uh, stopped through traffic through a large area around the Barbican, which we're currently travelling through now. Um, there are actually some exemptions though in the city, so they allow zero emission vehicles like Teslas or zero emission taxis to go through, um, or very very efficient hybrids, so um, or, there aren't very many of these though, so it actually does keep the numbers down. Although they'll probably have to review that in the future as electric cars become more popular, if they really want to keep the, uh, the, level, of, uh, the level of vehicles down as well as the emissions down. Um, but yeah, you can just see here, we're really just following this little route that has uh, little Q symbols on the road. And this is a really useful cut through, taking us sort of uh, east to west through the city of London. And we're sort of coming out around the back of Smithfield Market. There is a little bus stand here, by the way. Um, I think the 56 route and a number of other bus routes use this little uh, building and car park here to turn around. So do be careful of turning buses, but generally there shouldn't be any other traffic in here. This is Hosier Lane. Um, as you can see, there are bollards here. That means there's no through traffic on it at all, so very, very quiet. Um, and this bit's a little bit confusing, so um, you need to go through this little gap here between the building site and that little uh, sort of old brick building, and then go down this street called West Smithfield. And this is a one-way street, but we've got a contraflow lane here that's protected from uh, the rest of the traffic. And this is going to take us out onto Farringdon Street. And uh, this street is basically part of what uh, most people refer to as the north-south cycle superhighway so it's a really busy fast cycle route with protected cycle lanes the whole way down it and we're heading towards Blackfriars now we're heading south you can also take it up north towards like Camden, Farringdon um, but we're going in this direction 
Um, it does switch sides a couple of times, which can slow you down a bit. But uh, yeah, generally it's a really high quality route and uh, we're going to be following it more or less the whole way through to South London, through to Elephant and Castle. This is probably a good time to make two things clear, two things that I always forget to mention and should do. The, uh, the first is that if you look in the description of this video, you will find a link to the uh, a map of it, a map of the route. And uh, you can download it in a GPS file and use it in your own device or, you know, on an app of your choice. And uh, that may not look that useful now because we're basically just going straight. Um, but there are bits later in the route that aren't as signposted where you kind of need to weave through back streets to stay away from the traffic. So I would recommend having a look at the map, if not downloading it. The other thing to say is that if you enjoy this video, if you find it useful or you just find it weirdly hypnotic, then do subscribe to the channel because I do post new ones like it every week and uh, yeah generally I try and stick to quiet streets and protected cycle lanes and I also take requests so if you've got any then uh, yeah flag them up and let me know um, I'll see what I can do. I think uh, this route is very high quality and uh, one nice thing about it you can see here is that the cycle track goes behind these bus stops so if you need to use the bus stop you just go across that zebra crossing and that means that when we're going down this road if a bus pulls up at a bus stop then we don't have to overtake it we can just uh, go behind it um one interesting thing here is we're going under this railway here this is the southeastern main line you can see it says on the left there charing cross railway blackfriars station that's obviously a bit confusing because most people would think of blackfriars station as being you know on the river um, and not on what you might call the Charing Cross Railway. Um, that is actually a very short-lived station. It was only open for about five years in the 19th century, and uh, it was on the southeast main line coming in from Kent. And uh, yeah, it was actually eventually replaced by uh, Waterloo East Station, which had a lot better interchange with uh, Waterloo Station. Obviously, it had a you know it was a much more useful location. Um, so yeah, that was a very short-lived railway station, sometimes known as Blackfriars Road, apparently. So if you've ever wondered about that one, then uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. There's another interesting landmark coming up here. We're about to go to uh, essentially a roundabout called St. George's Circus, and it's got this obelisk in the middle here. Um, this obelisk actually uh, is not the only thing to have stood on this site. There also used to be a clock tower, and uh, that was unfortunately demolished in the 1930s because it was considered a nuisance to traffic. And the only reason that the obelisk was saved is because it had originally been moved over to uh, down this road actually towards the Imperial War Museum. But then they moved it back in 1998. So uh, that's why it still stands there. Although it did used to have oil lamps on it apparently. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we've come off that main, uh, that main road there. And we've sort of, you notice that we've gone round Lambeth Road and we're sort of heading on St George's Road here and anybody who knows their skyscrapers in London will know that that is Elephant and Castle looming up um, in the background there so yeah we are heading towards Elephant and Castle and if you were to keep going straight down this road you would end up at the Elephant and Castle roundabout which if you haven't been there in a while it does actually have segregated cycle lanes on it it's no longer quite as scary but we're not actually going that way we're turning right here and you wait for the lights and we're going down you follow these little CS7 signs these blue signs on the road and you go down Elliot's Row and uh, this road is particularly poorly surfaced. There are other roads available. You can actually go this way down other roads, but I think this is probably easier from a wayfinding point of view. And uh, yeah, you can see there's lots of sort of families on bikes and stuff. It's uh, it's quite a nice route. Just follow these little blue lines, and these are all. This is a filtered street here, and uh, you run down Churchyard Row, and this is uh, right next to St Mary's Churchyard at Elephant and what we've basically done here is we've basically bypassed the Elephant and Castle roundabout. It's a little shortcut and it also keeps us away from the busier roads. Uh, wait at this crossing, it's a joint cycles crossing, cross the A3 and go straight down this street on Hampton Street. Now we actually want to go into the estate that's dead ahead of us and you can go through that little gap there but I'd rather not dismount from the bike so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of a detour through these back streets and we're going to use the vehicle entrance to the estate just here. Just taking care of that car and going here into the Canterbury Place estate and you can see there's a few people use this as a through route for bikes. Do be really careful on this estate, cycle slowly, be courteous to people because it's a pedestrian area and you know you don't want to upset anybody, particularly anyone who lives on the estate, you don't want to um, be a nuisance or anything like that so yeah, do be careful. People do take the piss because I do say that in every video but I do genuinely believe it and uh, yeah you know just as cars should be courteous to cycles I think cycles should be courteous to pedestrians it's all about the hierarchy of provision and you know and at the very top of the hierarchy of provision should be like wheelchair users and you know pedestrians should be courteous to wheelchair users because uh, it's all about the sort of level of vulnerability that you've got and how much respect and courtesy you should pay to 
to the uh, to the people who uh, are more vulnerable road users than you, basically. We are currently in the uh, Southwark Council area, and you can just see we're going through this uh, low traffic neighbourhood now. These planters are a sure sign of a, a recently installed low traffic neighbourhood. What we're doing here on Alberta Street and Delorne Street is we're essentially running via filtered streets through a low traffic neighbourhood parallel to the A3, um, and that's taking us dead towards Brixton. And uh, that's essentially, uh, you know, this is a, a quiet parallel route. Um, and I actually think this isn't a signposted route or anything, this is basically just one of my own. And uh, I actually think with a few sort of minor changes, this would actually make a great quiet way. Um, if anyone from TFL is watching, you know, uh, you could spend relatively small amounts of money here and uh, it, it would generally be a pretty nice uh, place to cycle. I think it already is pretty good. But uh, there's a few improvements. So this, this one, St. Agnes Place, that runs along Kennington Park, that's Kennington Park to the sides. This this road can get a little bit hairy. There's still th through traffic on it. You could filter it. It's not really suitable as a through route. Probably better to uh, to to quieten this down a little bit. And there's a few places where like junctions could be improved. And uh, there's a bit further on actually where there's uh, where there's a sort of one way street that really needs to be tweaked to be accept cycles. You can see there's a, there's a little bit of through traffic here. You're not really going to run into too much of it. Um, but generally it's okay. You just need to keep a look out here. Now we come out here, that cafe on the right always looks quite nice by the way, I always see people sitting outside it. Um, come up to the uh, traffic lights here and uh, that pub on the left, the Kennington, I believe has a very good pub quiz, or at least it did, I don't know if it currently does, depending on what lockdown regulations are. Um, we're now on Foxley Road, which is one of the two roads on this route which I'd say is probably not too nice. Um, this could probably do with some improvement. And um, There's a particularly tricky junction here. What you should actually do, I don't do this in this video, you should actually get off your bike and cross this as a pedestrian. What I've actually done here is just slip through there and you're not actually supposed to do that. Um, that is actually a no entry, it's a banned turn. Um, but I do believe the council is working on changing that and making it accept cycles. Um, what you want to do here is you want to just follow this little quiet street around here, around Cancel Road. and. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of a, a slightly circuitous route to do it. Um, you can see that person seemed to be going quite fast, although you can never really tell in this video because I do speed the videos up. So anyone who looks like they're speeding isn't necessarily doing so. Um, you come out here. I always mention this in the video. This, this is quite a nice new development here, Ithorn Road. I think it's all right. Um, this flat's look far too expensive, but you know that's just London these days. Um, that, I always say this, but there's a cycle route next to us, a cycle path which you simply can't use because there's no drop curb. Um, see that you literally just can't get onto it they really need to come back and stick a drop curb so you can just use that cycle path it would be really really handy if it was actually usable um come out of Ithorn road you just come out of this new build estate here onto Ackerman road or Ackerman road don't know how you say that and uh, this is the other slightly busier road of the route it's not too bad if you can cope with this then um you can basically cope with the whole route but yeah uh, you can see there's a little bit of traffic built up here could probably do with some cycle lanes here and also onto loughborough road which um it's further on from here. I think you could probably fit them behind the parking. It's quite a relatively wide street, isn't it? It's, there's quite a lot of space for it. Um, what I'm actually doing here is I'm coming off my bike and I'm just, just pushing my bike here. I'm just walking and I'm crossing the road here as a pedestrian and coming onto Five Ways Road. Um, this is called Five Ways because this junction has Five Ways. Five Ways Road is completely close to traffic, so you can't go in, you can't go out of it. So it's best to access it as a pedestrian and then you just get back on your bike. And that's actually one of the beauties of cycling. Um, we're now on Overton Road, uh, this is the Angel Town or Angel Town, not sure how you say it, uh, estate. And uh, one thing to watch out for is these little mini speed bumps on the floor, which there's one there. And boom, yeah, that's a bit of a shock, so you don't want to go too fast over those. But it does also keep the, the cars quite slow. And uh, yeah, this is a sort of back streets route into the centre of Brixton. We're very, very close now. There's a little bit too much traffic here, I'd say. Um, it's okay. Like, you know, this anyone can cycle on this. It's quite a busy time of day, busy time of the week. Um, but this could definitely benefit from a low traffic neighbourhood. I think there's a little bit of rat running. Uh, but generally, it's probably the best way in that exists. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're going up Wiltshire Road here. And you really just want to follow Wiltshire Road up. And this is going to take us right dead into the centre of Brixton. You, you know you're going the right way if you go past the uh, police vans, uh, which are just up ahead here. And yeah, we're just crossing this slightly busy region. So there's a little bit too much traffic to be totally comfortable, but um, it's mostly good. These police vans here, this is how you know you're going the right way. And you come in through the back of the recreation centre um, on Pope's Road. And uh, yeah, this is going to lead us right into the heart of Brixton. 
those shipping containers on my left are, um, I believe it's called Pot Brixton, but especially Box Park. And that Sports Direct will soon be gone and I think replaced by quite a tall tower. Um, I think they're planning to build, I think that's the site of the Hondo Tower. Um, this bit is lovely, uh, Electric Avenue, probably one of my favourite streets in London. The market here is generally fantastic, like the quality of fruit and veg is like astonishingly good, it's really cheap. They take like contactless, it's really, really good. You can see why it's absolutely rammed. Um, just a great place to come and shop. If you are in South London, just come and, come and buy your stuff here, it's fantastic. Um, also, you know, if you if you do insist on cycling through this bit, just be really slow, and you're probably better off walking your bike. To be honest, you don't want to uh, be a nuisance to anyone. But as you can see, we're now coming out on Brixton Road here. This is right next to the tube station. So yeah, we've made it. And uh, thanks very much for watching that, guys. I really appreciate that. And I hope this route's useful. And uh, yeah, you can see it's about 40 minutes long. If you find this video uh, helpful, or you enjoyed it. Do subscribe to the channel because I post new ones like it every week. Thanks very much and see you again next time.